This is the form of a hypothesis test. When we do a hypothesis test, we start out with a null hypothesis. We typically write it this way, h for hypothesis, 0 for that null. And we write the null hypothesis either in English or using mathematical terms. But we might say something like, the null hypothesis is that the lady does not, let's see. I'll say the lady does not have this skill. There's multiple ways to phrase it. Right? But she does not have the skill of distinguishing between these two types of cups. We come up with a null hypothesis, an assumption that there's actually nothing real going on here, no real pattern. Then we come up with what's called a test statistic, some summary of our data that's just one number. So here, the lady picked out four cups. That was our data. And our statistic is the number of cups she got correct. And then what we do is we come up with what's called the reference distribution. That's what this is. We'll put this on a slide in just a moment. But I think it's helpful to label it here. This is the reference distribution. The reference distribution shows you each of the possible values of the test statistic, what we'd see in the data, and how likely those different values would be if the null hypothesis were true. So remember how we got this histogram. We said, assuming the lady is guessing at random, what's the probability she'd get each of these numbers of cups correct? And then, to finish the hypothesis test, we look at what we actually saw. So these are all the numbers of cups that she could have gotten right. But suppose she actually got three of them right. And then we say, OK, well, looking at this histogram, looking at this distribution, how extreme is the value we actually saw? And we calculate that by saying, what's the probability we would have seen a value, for example, at least as big as we actually saw? And here, that's 17 out of 70. That's called the p-value. We could have calculated this number in multiple ways. What we calculated is called a right-sided p-value. What's the probability that we would see a number at least as big as we actually saw if the null hypothesis is true? We also could have calculated the left-sided p-value. What's the probability she'd get three or fewer correct? Okay. The definition of the one-sided p-value is just the minimum of those two, which is smaller. The probability she'd get something at least as big as three, or the probability she'd get something three or less. Okay. And by convention, the two-sided p-value is two times the one-sided p-value. Let me put this on a formal slide for you. So again, here's our setup. The lady claims that she can tell whether milk is poured into a cup before or after the tea is poured. We have four cups of tea poured in each way for a total of eight cups. And her task is to choose the four cups that have the milk poured first. Suppose that three of her four cups did indeed have the milk poured first. What do we conclude? So here's the same picture that I just drew for you. And what we're saying, again, is what's the probability that she would have at least three correct. And so here's a picture where I've just filled those in blue, so you can see. And okay, this is the reference distribution for the number of cups she'd get correct, assuming that she's guessing at random. And then we can see that she actually got three, and that four is greater than three. So the form we're taking here is a proof by contradiction. We make some assumption, and then we assess whether the data contradicts that assumption. So we start out with this null hypothesis, this null assumption. In this case, the lady does not have the ability to taste, to, to tell the difference between milk first and tea first. And then we summarize the data using one number. We call this a statistic. Statistics is a field, but the word statistic also has a meaning, and that's a number you can calculate given your data. So we summarize the data using one number. And then we say, if the null hypothesis is true, in other words, if the lady does not have this skill, if she's just guessing randomly, what values of the statistic would we expect to see? And that's called the reference distribution. And if the null is true, how unusual is the value of the statistic that we actually observed? In other words, how surprised are we that she perhaps got three of them right? And that's the p-value. The probability we'd see data at least as extreme as actually observed if the null hypothesis were true.